Ravi Dasan pointed to the open dungeon door and asked Sam and Sam Haven to go inside. First of all, don't stand by the door because you can't see in the dark. Go a little further inside and stand. He said. When Saman Sambhavan entered the dungeon, darkness seemed to engulf him. Then, Ravi Dasan went back through the walkway to Nandini Devi's Vasantha Mandapam. From there he was looking at the palace of Palyavetarayar. Shouldn't it be necessary for someone other than the nurse to rush into the dungeon and force the door? While Ravi Dasan was thus standing in Vasantha Mandapam looking at the palace gate, Mandakini walked silently and entered the open dungeon. Was the darkness of the dungeon a wonder to her who had been so accustomed to the middle of the night in the dense forest? Within a few seconds, the eye started to appear. She saw the person who had come with Ravi Dasan a little distance away, struggling against a pillar. She went in the opposite direction. A staircase was found there. A dungeon path led down there. She went down the steps and stopped. Sam and Sam Havan must have heard some noise. Who's that? Who's that? He voiced. It went through the open door and fell lightly on Ravi Dasan's ear. At the same time, Ravi Dasan saw the nurse coming through the palace gate with a lamp in her hand. He went ahead and hurried to warn Sam and Sam Havan. Entering the dungeon door, Sam Bava. Where are you? Did you call me? He said. Yes, called. Is it in a hurry? What if someone hears your voice outside? Did you think I'd leave you here like this? Saman Sambhavan approached Ravi Dasan saying, No, no. I have called to ask something. At this moment a bright light was seen at the door of the dungeon. Oko. The woman has come with the torch, she is going to see you. Go. Go. Go away and stand in the pillar's hiding place. Quick. Said Ravi Dasan. Saman Sambhavan hastily retreated. The next second the nurse stood at the door of the dungeon with a torch in her hand. Wizard. Wizard. Where have you gone? She said. I'm not going anywhere, I was just waiting for you, Ravi Dasan approached her and took Devarthi in his hand. Woman. Lock the door outside. Come back in a moment with the key. Knock on the door. Open it when I call. Look and open when no one's there. Said Ravi Dasan. Well, sorcerer. But I warn you. The little rascal has suspected something. If you get caught, don't betray me. Asked the nurse. Woman. Don't fuss in vain. I told you so. The end of time is near. Why are you asking me to come back and open the door? There's another way out of the dungeon. That way is of no use today, the river is overflowing with flood waters. Go. Be back in exactly an hour. The nurse went outside and slammed the door. As she locked the door outside, Ravi Dasan stormed inside. Then Saman rushed towards the presence of Sambhavan, holding the lamp in his hand. Sambhava. Did you say you want to ask me something? Now ask me, he said. Have you been here before? Asked Saman Sambhavan. What's one time? I've been there many times. Where else did you think all the stuff we put together came from? Said Ravi Dasan. I didn't hear that. Didn't you leave me here a while ago? Again. Have you just arrived? Did you ever come in the middle? Not in the middle, not in the side, why do you ask? Not long after you left, the light on the doorstep suddenly went out and I knocked on the pillar. Perhaps the door will open automatically. A figure seemed to come in, footsteps were distinctly heard. This dungeon of your paranoia is like a shadow in the dark. Suddenly the light appears and disappears. Strange noises are heard. Some of the people who entered here have died of fear. Their skeletons are lying there. The scavenger has deliberately left the skeletons untouched. Anyone who enters this dungeon without knowing it will be scared to death by the skeletons. That. So you can enter this dungeon without anyone knowing, what? Ordinarily no one can enter. 
it doesn't seem like anyone would have entered except me. I have also come here with the help of Isla Iarani or her friend. Then you told me about the human skeletons. Is that it? When the Punisher wants to punish someone terribly, he leaves the dungeon door slightly open. Those who hear about the treasure dungeon enter it for greed. And then they never leave. Are you saying that no one who came here except one has gone out? That's how it was before. Now I'm suspicious of the two. I know who you're talking about. You're talking about Valaveria and Kanthamara. Yes. We still have them alive. How many times do I have to tell you? The young queen has left Valaverian for something important. When Sundara Chola's clan perishes, Vandiyadeva will also die. The time is near. Come. Come. I will show you all the tunnels in this dungeon. Only beware of one thing. Here is the pile of Navaratna. There is a Mandapam. In it, there are piles of Navaratnams collected by the Cholas for a hundred years. If you lose your mind in the passion of those Navaratnams, you will forget what you came for. Ravidasa. Who are you saying these words to? Like you, am I not the one who swore an oath on Virapandayan's headless body? Who said no? Even my mind was a little bored when I saw those heaps of Navarats, that is why I warned. So be it, come on, let's go, first I will show you the way to the Kolan Palace. After I show you that, you can take a leisurely look around this whole dungeon at a later time. Might be useful. Ravidasan walked up holding the lamp and Saman Sambhavan went by his side. They followed the same path that had once been followed by Pariya Palyavatareya and Ila Iarani Nandini. In the smoky light of the torch, the pillars of the dungeon and their shadows looked like huge black goblins. Bats that live in the dark have the appearance of terrifying little ghosts. Giant spider webs were found here and there, with giant spider mites among them. Strangely shaped creatures crawled on the ground, some very fast and some very slow. As Ravi Dasan said, many unknown noises were heard. The sound of the storm that was still raging outside somehow echoed into the mine dungeon from somewhere. Saman Sambhavan suddenly stopped and said, Ravi Dasa. Didn't you hear something like footsteps? He asked. Why don't you listen? You just listen to our footsteps. Don't be afraid in vain. If you're scared like this while I'm here, how can you stay here for two or three days? Said Ravi Dasan. I'm not afraid of anything, I'd rather hear while you're here than be in vain after you're gone. Did you not say that some of those who entered this dungeon died here? Saman Sambhavan said. Yes, their spirits are roaming around here. So what? Are the ghosts screaming at us? That little boy Vandiyadeva somehow managed to escape from this dungeon without being scared. Why should you and I, who have seen so many ghosts and devils, be afraid? Let there be demons and devils, who is afraid of all that? There may be other animals, poisonous beasts here. Are you going to be afraid of snakes and scorpions? If they see us, they will go and hide in the arches. However, it's only an idea if I stay here for two or three days, Ravi Dasa. Maybe before that, if I get a chance. No, no. Just don't make that mistake. Today is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, two days you have to wait. See when Sundara Chola is alone. Sundara Chola's Padamakashi is always by his side. On Friday night, of course, Durga will go to Parmswari's temple. She will go. You must finish your work that night as well. Sundara Chola's clan will be exterminated on Friday. If something happens before and after, things may go bad. Said Ravi Dasan. Both of them walked quickly while talking like this. Only Saman Sambhavan kept looking around. However, they did not see the mute queen who was following them, hiding behind the pillars without making a sound. They came from one side of the dungeon to the other. A long wall stood in front of them. It doesn't seem to have a door anywhere. But a little light came through a small panel at the top of the wall. 
Ravi Dasan handed over the torch to Sambhava and climbed up the steep wall holding the stumps that were stretched here and there. After looking through the balcony for a while, he came down as Sarasara. Jump out through that portal? Is that the way? Sam Havan asked. No, no, only a rat can enter through that balcony. But if you look through it, you can see the Kolan Palace. You can also see the important place in that palace, said Ravi Dasan. Where Sundara Chola lies? said Sambhavan. Yes, you can see what the traffic is like over there by looking at this computer. Now come with me. Watch what I'm doing. After saying this, Ravi Dasan bowed down. Staring, he placed his foot on a round stone and pressed it with both hands, holding a square stone, a way was found below. Oh my god! An underpass inside the dungeon! Samban Sambavan wondered. Yes, no one but the Great Reaper and the Younger Queen knew of this passage. I knew the third. Now you know too. You have found out how to open the passage, haven't you? Both of them went down to Abde, the light of the lamp went out for a while. The dumb queen came there in a single leap from where she had been hiding. She stared at the open path. She took a step to get into it. Then, as if reconsidering, she suddenly took the morning outside. After thinking for a while, she looked towards the place where Ravi Dasan had climbed the wall earlier. There she leapt in one leap and climbed the wall as he climbed. When she reached the platform, she sat on it and looked beyond. Along the wall was a garden and beyond it a beautiful attic. She felt sick when she saw the mansion. Her intuition told her that there were people alive and sweet within her. She also realizes that those who go undercover are intent on harming her loved ones. She prayed to the deity residing in Antarathma to grant her the power to thwart their evil intentions. Just as she was thinking of going down, she saw a wonderful sight on the top floor of a well-known mansion some distance away. A little while ago Ravi Dasan and Saman Samhavan, who were in that dark dungeon, climbed into it and hid in the shelter of the pillars. They peered inside the palace. At that time the majesty of the mansion was clearly visible due to the daylight. Ravi Dasan has no torch in his hand. Sam Bhavan had only a hand. Ravi Dasan took the job and aimed to throw it towards the interior of the mansion. The dumb queen's chest seemed to stop at that moment. Fortunately, Ravi Dasan did not quit his job. Saman gave it back to Sambhavan after throwing it away. The next moment they both disappeared from there. The dumb queen also came down from the platform through the wall. She looked at the tunnel and disappeared. After a while the torchlight was again visible on the path. Both came out and closed the tunnel. Didn't you know how to open it? Ravi Dasan asked. Sam Havan said, I understand that you don't need to worry any more. I will definitely do what I agreed to do. Sundara Chola's life will end on Friday. Do your work in the same way said Sam Havan. The young queen will take care of Kari Kalan and not worry about it. The little tiger escapes from the sea and finds himself in Nagaipatnam. But this time he cannot escape. The two female ghosts who saved him are now in this shelter. I saw the running girl and the mute in the crowd. That heroic Vaishnava traitor is also here. So even the little tiger can't escape anymore. I am going to send the village seed to Nagaipadinam. Sundara Chola's clan will perish this Friday. Then there is Madhurand Hakadivan. If he exists, it would be better if such a ghost came from the Chola country's Singadahuna for some time. Shouldn't the Pandya emperor also come of age? Talking like this, Ravi Dasan and Saman Sambhavan hurried along the way they had come.